fellow creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. Hi, <laughs> Wendy, look at who just decided she was gonna plop herself up here and hang out with me. I love her. Oh my word, I don't even know where I was at. I think I left off. If you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, mm -hmm, you guessed it, in the description box below. This dog is the zen in my day. She brings me so much zen and so much peace and calm. I, yeah, she came to me at the right time. Anyway, this is not about Winnie. If you wanna see more with Winnie, you can subscribe to my YouTube Shorts channel and that is where I bring to you some YouTube Shorts with our life with Winnie and their fun little videos. So yeah, head on over to my shorts and subscribe and then you'll be notified every time I upload because it's separate from my channel here and all the DIYs that I bring to you because I am uploading five days a week now. Anyway, so what do I have going on for you for today? Today, I'm bringing to you a DIY gift idea that is so easy to do, so budget friendly and has an outcome that is amazing. And did I say this gift idea is personalized? Oh my word, this is a gift that anybody would love to receive and it's a DIY that you're gonna love to make. Once you make one, you're gonna wanna keep making them because it's addicting and boy oh boy is it a versatile piece because you can really get creative with this DIY. I can't wait to show you what I have in store for you for today. So I'm gonna quit my yabbing, let's jump into it, and let me show you a quick, easy, budget-friendly, personalized gift idea that I think you should gift this year. Let's get to it. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll wanna stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. For those of you that are interested, the Etsy store is having a Black Friday sale starting today. Over the next five days, you're gonna get 50% off of digital downloads, 25% off of the embellishment packs, and another 25% off of vinyl decals. You can find the link to Linda's Etsy store, guess where? Yes, in the description box below. For today's personalized DIY, I'm gonna be using these, what I'm gonna call a four inch foam ball. We're a little shy of four inches. You can get these at Walmart. Any size will do. Dollar Tree's got a few. It really all depends on what size you want these balls to be. I want mine a bit on the bigger side because yeah, I do. So this is what I'm going with. I'm also gonna be using some of this fusible cotton fabric sheets. You're gonna get 10 sheets. This is by Taylor. You can get these at Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby. Make sure to take a coupon. You're gonna pay under $10 for them. They're less than a dollar a sheet. You've got fabric on one side and you've got that adhesive that irons on on the other. Because I have so many scraps, I keep my scraps. This piece looks like it'll work for today's DIY, so that's what I'm gonna use. Do not waste the scraps when you're paying good money for something like this. You're gonna pick out a picture that you wanna use for this DIY personalized gift. You're gonna print it out on some card stock in the wallet size. That's in the settings on your printer. You can find that easily. You're not gonna to wanna to use copy paper because copy paper is just a bit too flimsy. So you're gonna go with the card stock. Once you print it out on your card stock, it's gonna show you exactly where it's gonna print. Now you can go ahead and tape those scraps of fabric that you have, that infusible fabric onto your card stock pop it into your printer. I'm using an inkjet, not sure how it works for laser. Works perfect for inkjet, as you can see, and it printed it out perfectly. I need to cut this down to size, so to do that, I wanna use a circle. I found this glass that was the perfect size. Gonna go ahead and trace it on my picture and cut it out. You're gonna need some fabric for this DIY because hence, this is a quilted DIY, personalized DIY. Doesn't matter what size, you're just gonna wanna cut a couple pieces because you need to cover one side of the styrofoam ball because this is where we're gonna put our picture. Mm -hmm. Making it personalized, yes. This is one of those DIYs that works perfect for any of that scrap fabric you may have. So I dug into mine. This is a fabric that you've seen me use all season for my fall and harvest DIYs and now the Christmas ones. 
I'm gonna do a bit of patchwork because it's not gonna show. We need an area covered on the foam ball that's big enough for what is going to be the picture where we adhere the picture onto. I'm using hot glue for this part because I just am. Yeah, it's easier, it's quicker. When you're adhering or applying the fabric onto the foam ball, you're gonna wanna kinda do it on the snugger side. You don't want it to have any ripples. You don't want that fabric to be anything other than smooth on that ball. Once you've got that fabric good and applied onto your ball, you're gonna go ahead and apply your picture. Now, I will tell you this picture, I had to take it off of a ball before because I wasn't quite happy with the colors that I used. So the infused part is no longer on it, but you can very easily iron it onto your fabric before you put the fabric onto your ball, or you can just hot glue it like I am. Now there is a bit of fabric cutting that needs to be done for this DIY. You're gonna need two by two inch squares of fabric in any pattern, in any color. You pick, you coordinate, this is your DIY, so you're gonna make it your own. If you ask me how many you're gonna need, I honestly couldn't tell you, just cut a fair amount, because once you do one of these DIYs, you're gonna wanna do several, and you're also going to need some straight pins. You can get these at Walmart, $1.98 for $1,000. i am not sure if Dollar Tree carries them, but if they do, I'm sure you're not getting 1000 for $1.98 or even 500 So just get them wherever, but you're going to need them. Once you've got all those fabric squares cut, it does show or it looks like I used peaking shears on this, but that was for a previous DIY. Regular scissors are going to work just fine. These were scraps, remember? You're gonna take a straight pin and you're gonna place it right in the middle on the back side of your fabric. So you have something that looks like this, no need for perfection. Then at the top point of your picture, you're gonna go ahead and place that straight pin right down into your ball like so. Then we're gonna take our fabric and we're gonna fold it in half, just like this. Now you're gonna to wanna to do this as straight as you can. When there's a point on something, you can really tell when it's off. So you want it to be as straight as you can. Then we're gonna take the sides and fold them in just like this here. We're gonna take a straight pin and we're gonna hold down that side. Then we're gonna take the other side, fold that over, and yes, guess what? We're gonna pin that down as well. You should be left with something that looks like this, and if it doesn't, you've done something wrong, so you need to redo it. So we've got this top piece here. Now we need to do a bottom piece down here at the bottom of the picture, the bottom point. And you're gonna wanna, again, line up these points as evenly or as straight as you can. And so again, I'm gonna go ahead and place my straight pin in and you will see that I used a thimble to do that because once you've done a few of these balls, pushing in those straight pins, your finger starts to hurt a bit. And so I found that just by using a thimble and pushing it in, yeah, it saves you from that. So you can see I went ahead and put this bottom point in, I folded it in, my edges, I'm gonna again take my straight pins and place them right in the bottom, holding those side flaps down. And yes, again, this is what you should be left with, something that looks exactly like this. I feel like the best way to describe how to place these fabric squares is to think of your ball as having four points. You've got the top point, the bottom point, and the two side points. And that is where you're going to place your squares. And that's gonna kind of be relative to how we do the whole ball. And so you'll kind of see what I mean here in a bit. Here you can see I'm going ahead and I am placing my two side points and pinning down those inside flaps, yes. Once we've got those four fabric pieces, those original, initial four fabric pieces placed in the, I guess, four points of the picture, we're gonna rotate the ball, which then in turn gives us four more points. You can see the gaps that we have on each side. So when the ball is placed this way, you're going to see that there is this bottom point that I am starting off with, and there's the top point and the two side points that we are, again, going to place more of our fabric squares, overlapping them onto the original pieces that we put. You can see here that the points kind of overlap and you kind of want that look and you want to be consistent with it because it's going to make a difference on how the pattern of the fabric looks at the end. 
I will apologize now for how repetitious this DIY is because it is just that, but I'm gonna walk you through how to do the whole DIY because I kinda need to if you wanna have a good outcome with this personalized quilted DIY ornament ball that you're gonna gift people. Your ball should look like this, and if it doesn't, again, you need to fix it. There's a bit of tidying up that needs to be done. When I do this part of the tidying up on the ball, I like to use hot glue because it cuts down on the use of the straight pins. And at some point when you're using a lot of straight pins and you're pushing the straight pins into the fabric, they start hitting other straight pins and it makes it a bit harder to do. So I like to use hot glue. If you don't wanna use hot glue, you can totally, again, go with the straight pins. But again, the hot glue is also a bit quicker and it holds just as well. So I'm gonna put a bit of hot glue on all the corners there just to get them nice and laid down flat. We want those flat. We don't want them popping out everywhere. Again, it's gonna make proceeding on with this DIY easier because everything is, yes, tidy. Once we've got the first half of this ball done, well, really it's not the first half because we're gonna come back to it. We're gonna wanna work on the other half of the ball and you're gonna wanna find the center point that kind of goes through the ball, if you will. And so because I'm a perfectionist and I like it to be just so, I'm gonna place a straight pin here, just marking that spot so I don't lose where the center point is. Yeah, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Yep, I think that's it. That looks like it's the center on both sides so yeah let's move on where that straight pin once was i'm gonna go ahead and place my first fabric square right smack in the middle because there's no image on this side so we don't need to go around the image itself we're just gonna make that center point the center point of the back of our personalized diy ornament ball did i say that you're gonna want to make and gift to everybody because it's so easy budget friendly and the outcome is amazing once you've got those first four pieces down where all the points are meeting there in the center, you see how I did that? Again, I'm gonna go in with some hot glue and just hot glue down those edges because I like it tidy. Again, I'll say it again, yes, repeating myself. If you wanna use straight pins, use straight pins because I know somebody out there is gonna say, why didn't you just use straight pins? Because I didn't want to, I wanted to use hot glue. It's faster and it cuts down on straight pins. Did I say that yet? Yeah. Now we're gonna give this ornament pattern some personality and to do that, where each of the fabric squares meet or the points meet, the edges meet, that's where I'm gonna place my next set of squares using the four points again as a reference or a guide as to where we're gonna place our next set of fabric squares. I'm using a coordinating fabric because it's fun to just kind of mix up each of the rows or the layers, I guess, if you will. And so I'm gonna place it just the same way that I did the buffalo check ones. And yeah, again, these are fabric squares that were in my stash. If you ask me where I got this fabric, I'm gonna wanna say Walmart last year. It wasn't this year. The buffalo check was this year. Okay, so you can see here that I've placed my first one. And again, on the opposite side, I'm gonna place the top point, And then I'm gonna go ahead and place my two side points as well. And again, this is what you should be left with. The fun part of this is you can really get creative where you place your fabric squares. And that in turn is going to change up the pattern that you have when your ball is done the way it looks. It is really fun to get creative with this and really kind of come up with your own patterns to get your own design. So from here, I am going to place my next four fabric squares in these four points here. And when I place them, I'm gonna place them uneven. I'm gonna place them back just a bit, which is then going to give that center point, that center focal point of this ball, kind of a different look, something more than just a round look, I guess. And so yeah, I'm gonna place it just a bit lower than I did the last four points you can see here, which is then in turn going to give us kind of a cross, if you will. Just a bit lower there. You can see from these two here, I'm gonna place it back just a bit, and I'm gonna do that on the next three or four fabric squares, which will then leave your ball looking like this. Look at how cool that looks. Now, if you use different colored fabrics, obviously you're gonna have more of a 
I guess, differentiation when it comes to the rows, I guess, and the pattern. But because my tree is black, white, and red, and I'm, again, using my scraps, this is what I'm going with. But had I used more of a red fabric, you would definitely see more of the pattern. Get creative. Now we're back to the original side, the other side of a ball. We need to add another row of fabric because we need our two sides to meet in the middle of the ball. And that's where we're going. So you're gonna keep applying rows of fabric squares to each of the four points, but each side really has eight points, if you will, because you put the four, you rotate your ball, and you've got four more. And you're gonna do that until the two sides of your foam ball meet, the fabric meets. You can see here that I added a couple more rows of those fabric squares, and now each side of the foam ball, the fabric meets there in the center, and that's what I mean. And again, I'm gonna go in with my hot glue. I'm gonna tidy things up a bit, do some housekeeping, really get these corners laid flat because we've gotta cover up this seam here, right? And so to do that, it is so easy. I'm gonna take a piece of fabric and I'm gonna fold it into the width of what a decorative ribbon would be. And I'm using the coordinating fabric that I already used in this DIY because I ended on the buffalo check. And so I thought that this would be the perfect I guess ribbon or fabric to cover up that seam with. Again, if you wanna use ribbon, you can totally do that. If you wanna use burlap, use burlap. I would say twine, but it's not thick enough. So just go with like a burlap, a ribbon, or a fabric. You're gonna get the width that you need to cover up that seam. And in my case, it's a little bit over a half an inch in width because you really kinda of wanna cover up all those edges of the fabric that we hot glued down. Then you're gonna take your fabric or your ribbon and you're just gonna hot glue it down, wrapping it around that center part of the ball, just like so. Again, I'm gonna say it. If you wanna use straight pins, use straight pins. Guess what I'm using? Mm-hmm, hot glue. Before you completely hot glue that ribbon or that fabric down around that outside edge of your ball, you're gonna to wanna to place a hanger. And so I'm gonna use this red ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna hot glue it down to that center part of the ball there. And so when I take my fabric and hot glue it down the rest of the way around the ball, it's gonna cover up that ribbon, giving this a nice finished look. Okay, seriously, would you look at the outcome of this? So easy, so budget friendly, and the outcome is amazing. This is a DIY personalized gift that anybody is gonna love to receive. You're gonna sit down on the couch with a TV tray, you're gonna pop in a movie, or you're gonna put on Lifetime or Hallmark, or even binge watch something on Netflix, and you're gonna make a bunch of these balls because you can and you're gonna love it once you do it and look at the outcome of this. This is gonna be the gift that you give to everybody this year once you see this video because it's so easy and the outcome, did I say, is so stinking amazing. I love these. Who is today's KB Creations Crafters of the Day? It's going out to Kathy Reed Ward, who's bringing to us her recreation of my DIY Christmas card holder. I love it. Nicely done, Kathy. And we've also got Kimberly Becker here who is bringing to us her recreation of my DIY Dollar Tree sled. I am loving the spin and the twist that you put on this DIY. Thank you both so much for sharing your creations with us today. Well, look at here who's starting to upload consistently again, my Kayla girl. She's bringing to you a new series where she's showing you how to create your own bullet journals. This is such a fun series. You'll wanna head on over to her channel where she shows you just how easily you can create and DIY, did I say, your own bullet journal. You can find the link to Kayla's video today mm -hmm, in the description box below. How easy is this? It is easy, it's fun, and like I said, it's something you can do while you're binge watching your favorite show and you're gonna have fun doing it. And once you make one, like I said, am I repeating myself? You're gonna wanna keep making more. I hope you all enjoyed today's DIY personalized quilted ornament on a budget with an amazing outcome. Did I say that anybody would love to receive? Oh my word, I think I'm totally repeating myself, but I can't help it. I love this DIY. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes. Because like I always say, 
each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, you know what I'm gonna say, stay positive.